welcome to the Noodle Podcast. We are Kate and Max and we love noodling on what we've learned by accident. This podcast is a space where we share how we get the best out of ourselves and the people we've worked with. In today's episode, we talk about fun and forced fun. Times when forced fun goes wrong. And does fun at work really help you to learn? And if so, what are the right conditions so you remember it for the right reasons? So welcome back. Yes, to, here we are again. Yes, Kate and Max, we are Noodle and this is the Accidental Manager podcast series. And today we're going to talk about... Forced, no, fun. Fun, <laughs> fun, not forced fun. And we are going to talk about forced fun, but fun. We will have fun. <laughs> How many times have you been in a situation where you've been told it's Fun Friday? Uh, yes. Or Dress Down Friday? Or let's do the icebreaker. <laughs> 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 yeah. So we know that having fun is important. Mm. Actually, you sometimes get your best lessons when you're laughing. But too often, there are work situations where the environment doesn't allow that and people just think, oh, the secret is have some yeah. fun. Yeah. So we want to talk about when you've underdone it mm. and when you overdo it. So mm. let's start with overdo it because it's a lot easier starting there. Because I think you've got some nice stories. Oh. So. My goodness, Max. So I remember a time when it was my first day at a particular organisation and my first day coincided with the annual departmental away day, team building, fun, 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 fun. And it was in the middle of a field. Um, we were literally put into teams with different, you know, coloured T-shirts on so you knew who you were with. I didn't know anybody. It's mm. my, my first day. Kind of wanting to make a good impression. But there was a point in the day when... For whatever reason, I was dressed in an inflatable sumo wrestler outfit, jumping up and down on a bouncy castle, punching people to try and make them fall over. This is what we've been told to do. I wasn't just doing it. <laughs> I can't remember why, um, but I do remember this is not the thing that I wanted no. to be doing on my first day. And there was a bit of a pelvic floor incident. <laughs> or which which happens Awkward. to women after they've had children too much sometimes. information okay yes well I'll, I'll stop you can imagine i yep. didn't make the first impression i was hoping to <laughs> and i blame fun yes mm. reminds me of a forced fun situation that i was in slightly different setting still at work though yeah that time when you're on a training program um, i was being taught how to do presentation skills. So you see us at the beginning of the training program and uh, we are going to do something that is theoretically going to set us all at ease, make doing presenting a lot easier. Lovely. Obviously, that would involve an umbrella, jumping over a bucket, shouting things like, I'm amazing! Is that what you had to do? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine me. Why trotting. are you jumping over a bucket? I can do lots of fun, sort of silly things, and I don't. I'm not averse, as you know. To true, yeah, you can do lots of silly yeah, things. Yeah. But being forced to jump over a bucket and shout with an umbrella in your hand, I'm a mate. Yeah, I can shout that without jumping over a bucket and without an umbrella. And I think there is a positive intention there. Uh -huh. But what I remember is the excruciating pain of doing that yeah. rather than the lesson that was obviously meant or intended out of that situation. Yeah. So I think there's that. People respond in different ways, don't they? I know. So when you're saying about the, the icebreaker or the energizer, <sighs> I, I love nothing more than getting complete strangers to do ridiculous things. <laughs> But there's something about the power in that, Max. So <laughs> we used to do like a, a big circle, pair up with somebody next to you. This is the first day of a something, some workshoppy thing. You've got going to introduce each other. But while you do that, you need to do a silly walk into the centre of oh, the God. circle. I'd hate you. Introduce each other. <laughs> then go back again. And whoever does the best silly walk yes, wins. Yes, I'd hate you. I'd hate you. Okay, so I had very senior managers um <laughs> doing either penguin walks or two of them i think they did get the prize did a wheelbarrow walk you know like at school <laughs> into the middle and out again i mean i don't remember any of their names though and i suppose that was supposed to be the learning point of that exercise sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't yes 
When when have you known fun to be the thing that that kind of helps your understanding of how we operate? And well, I think board games. I know we've created one, but I'm thinking about another time. So we'll come back to the board game board we created. Game, yes. But playing games, I think, takes you back to being a child. Yeah, it takes you back to that sort of sense that we're all in this together and this is fun. And 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 actually, when you think about board games, there's always something you're learning. Yeah. So yeah. there's an intention there. I remember playing a game with a group of people using jigsaw puzzles. Okay. And setting three groups up on different tables with jigsaw puzzles. And a sort of a version of, of what you did with making people do funny walks was me not giving them the boxes. Okay. <laughs> and not telling them that some of their jigsaw puzzles were missing. And things like that. Oh. Just to try and create the group dynamics of mm. people noticing that they're starting to get angsty or frustrated. or yeah. So sort of forcing a situation that occurs in the workplace. Yeah. But also doing it with a bit of fun, which is it's a race, it's a competition. Yes. So you sort of driving different behaviours at the same time. You have to be careful how you do that. Stuff. You do. That element of playfulness is so important, but you, you can't make it be there. If the environment isn't there, people are not going to just warm up and suddenly be jokey and laughy, are they? Can I tell you about uh, when I was working with a legal team, an uh -huh. internal legal team that were not getting on very well at all? Um, they had a new manager. I think the manager had been their peer and had been promoted and something was not quite right. They yes. just weren't getting on at all. Um, there were lots of mistakes being made. The manager, all credit to her, said something awful is happening. They won't tell me what the problem is. I think I might be the problem. Mm -hmm. I need someone to come and facilitate a conversation with them. So that someone ended up being me. So these are all smart, experienced lawyers. They know their stuff. Status is important to them. Yeah. And one of the things they told me that they were getting very frustrated about was the new manager, in an attempt to introduce some fun and playfulness, had started giving out smiley stickers <laughs> for the work they were doing, if it was good, uh -huh. uh, which which these people were finding hugely insulting. I've got a smiley sticker yeah. on my piece of work. I don't need a smiley sticker. But what was even more interesting was, yeah, they didn't want smiley stickers, but the people who weren't getting smiley stickers <laughs> started being insulted as well. Why haven't I got a smiley sticker? I don't want it, but I haven't got one. It was all going horribly wrong. And that's because the, the groundwork wasn't there. You can't yeah. just make fun happen. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that needs to be in what we call the system. Yeah, I think you have to have, you really have to consciously think about what you're trying to do. And also how it might go wrong. Yes. Um, but if I think about things we've done, one of the things that I've really enjoyed us doing, and again, learned something else around it accidentally, was the card games. Yeah, here, take some yeah. cards. Card, card games. Card and games. and the synergy maps. So shall I just oh, talk yes, about synergy that. maps yeah, first? Yeah. So if you remember, when we were working for this particular client, we were creating lots of different workshops and what we wanted to do was help people at the end of the day consolidate their learning. Yes. So we were putting each of the things that they learned into sort of a, a picture yeah. that they could colour in. Which and sounds crazy, doesn't it? Yeah, it does It wasn't crazy. just colouring, to no. be fair. It was kind of little visual reminders of all the stuff they'd learned during the day yeah. and a way for them to make their own notes about That's what right. that meant to them. Mm. However, they did have coloured pens. They so did. Some colouring happened. I think the thing I learned by accident and the colouring in bit was running a workshop one day where because of the way that the room was laid out, we'd ended up with this table in the middle of the room that was running the length of the table. And everybody was doing this synergy map, this integration at the end of the day thing. And I just suddenly got this sense as everybody was sat around the table, all excited like kids are at a tea party at the end when they've had too many sweets and too many cakes. <laughs> so everyone being really fizzy because the, the, the day's nearly over, but, but then all sitting down with their coloured pens and just all passing, could I have the blue pen? Can I have the yellow pen? And all colouring in together and talking to one another like that. And I just have this sense that it was like a kid's tea party. Uh -huh, yeah. But it was that sort of nice shared experience. We're all learning together, but we're here together. Mm. Learned that by accident, doing it that way. Yes. Yeah. Really good. So allowing that sort of shared experience and playfulness to be in there, that sense of you can't get it right or wrong, it just is, that definitely helps with the learning to stick. Should we talk about oh, yeah, cards? Yeah, cards. So this is another way for people to be able to say what might not be possible in a usual work environment mm. is by giving them a little bit of something and go put yourself in this position. Yes. So do you want to say a bit about what your 
cards yeah. are, for example, and what the purpose of this is that we, we've created and goes down pretty well. Yeah. So as you've already said, the opportunity to put yourself in a situation that's like something you normally go through without feeling like you're role playing. Yeah. So what we've got yeah. here is cards that help you reframe things that might be going on in your head that are not particularly helpful thoughts. Mm. So you've got some cards in your hands that have got some statements on it. Like, like these unhelpful thoughts that we all do have. Things like, um, I'm so busy fighting fires, I don't have any time to do anything properly. Yeah. Or, um, this is never going to work. <laughs> or, it's not my job to do that. Um, or, mm, those people don't really like me. Yes. <laughs> And there's quite a large stack of those. Yes. So there's plenty there. All those thoughts that can kind of get in the way of you feeling confident and doing your best work. So the idea is that we've got four different ways that you could reframe that phrase in your head, mm. like saying it from another perspective, imagining it from another perspective or flipping it. So turning it inside out, mm. future back, imagining yourself in the future. How would you really feel about this situation? Or acting as if we've got that sort of one there, haven't we? The uh, rather than I can't, but turning it into I can. Yeah. So we created this game with in our heads a set of rules around how you're going to play it. So put the cards down. One of us picks up a card and reads out the I can't do this or yeah. it's too difficult. And then the rest of the uh, the group then have a go at trying to rephrase it for you using these different yeah. ways of doing it. Again, by accident, remember working with a group of, uh, oh, sorry, several groups in one setting and just handing out the card packs to each group and saying roughly what I thought was a very clear set of instructions roughly clear set of instructions <laughs> and finding that each group found their own way to play the game yes. but to learn and have fun yes. lots of laughter but at the end of it having played it in a sort of quick fire snap type way mm. stuff had stuck yes do you remember that uh, project that we worked on where we had to help people understand when they were just joining an organization mm -hmm. so it was their induction program yeah big multinational yeah. complex lots of different departments they needed to understand what their role was in it and how to interact with the other parts yeah and it was difficult to explain and an organization chart was shifting every week practically wasn't it so our task was to help people get grounded about whereabouts they mm -hmm. were and what they would be doing and what other people did as well i think the brief for us was don't do death by PowerPoint. How can we turn this induction into an experience that, a bit like your first day sumo wrestling, needs to be a positive memory and helps you as you transition into the organisation rather than something that you can't remember or you fall asleep to yes. the PowerPoint slides of structure charts and We had to make something very complicated not so complicated. The reality was complicated, but mm. the need for people to feel certain about what they were doing mm. and how to interact with other people was fairly straightforward. So we created a game like Cluedo. Cluedo or Clue if you're in the US. Yeah. yeah. So that the idea behind that was to set up a situation where the relationship with the customer or the client had broken and the game was to try and find out who's responsible for this. <laughs> Who killed the relationship? Was it technology? Was it sales? Was mm. it operations? Mm -hmm. And people would start playing the game and you had people of different levels joining the organisation on that day. So you had MDs, directors, and then you had analysts and you had graduates. Mm. So it levelled everybody, got everybody playing the game and actually got everybody to start to share what they knew about organisations, but over a nice bit of fun and yes. a bit of a board game. And that levelling thing was so important. So even giving them their brief was quite upbeat. Do you remember there was somebody we'd, we'd interviewed or had an MD do a video, managing director, and so she was talking to camera and saying, okay, group, yes. <laughs> your mission, should you choose to accept it, is <laughs> to find out who killed this customer relationship. And uh, and this, this tape will self-destruct. So you had a little bit of a ha oh, yeah. oh, and everyone go, falls into, oh, okay, there's a bit of a story going on there. We know how stories work. Yeah. I've got a part, I'm a character, not role play, but okay, yes. so I'm going to be in this department. How do we work with others? It got such good results in terms it of people did. feeling upbeat about what they were going to do because we'd created that sort of lightness that they would go when they started their new job in their new team or office or wherever, they'd talk about that. People who'd been there for 5, 10, 15 years, 20 years 
was saying, can I, can I have a go of that? Mm. And we ended up doing a re-induction program so that they could understand, okay, that's how we fit. Oh, we've never really thought about talking to that department. Oh, I see. This could make it all better for us and everybody else. It's pretty good, wasn't it? It was good. So I think the importance here of having a bit of fun but doing it with positive intentions and outcomes, so some clear outcomes, is I think the thing we're trying to highlight here. You should not be forcing fun. Right, absolutely. Because that makes it very painful and excruciating. For people, And you lose sight of what you're there to do. Yeah, In fact, you're quite. too busy self-managing yourself to actually be able to pay any attention to what's going on around you. So that's yeah. no good. But yeah. then you also need that lightness to be able to give more of who you are. And to be able to share and actually just think freely and feel unjudged. Yes. Which, as children, we are, aren't we? Yeah. Yes. And we're all big children at heart. So, yeah, that's I guess that's the main takeaway we'd want you to get from today's session is that um, work is too hard not to have fun. You can't force it. You've got to create the right conditions. Mm. Um, and laughter helps things to stick certainly does hopefully without any pelvic floor incidents <laughs> <laughs> okay so i guess thank you for listening to us today thank you mm, yeah and of course if you haven't already please do sign up for the podcast series of the accidental manager and if you've got a story mm. of when fun at work has or has not worked for you we're on instagram now yeah. yes so noodle underscore space the word space so fun stories there. Keep us entertained until we speak with you again. So until think, next time. Yeah. Kate and Max, we're Noodle. Thank you very much for joining us today. We'd love to know what you think and any experiences that you have that you're happy to share. Please leave a message for us on www.noodle.space. Don't forget to subscribe, share and leave us a review. We'll see you next time.